Welcome to the Read Conmigo podcast, where we help you raise bilingual, bicultural, and kind-hearted kids. Get inspired with real-life stories of students, educators, and parents sharing their bilingual journey and how they're making a difference today. I'm Frances Barajas, and I'm your host. You are listening to episode 11 of the Read Conmigo podcast, brought to you by Infinity, a Kemper company. Hi, Read Conmigo family. Thank you so much for tuning in to our season finale. This is actually the last episode of season one. And today we have prepared a very special episode for you. We are interviewing the founders of Pixie Dreams, Corina Betancourt and Isabella Morales. Both of them are mothers, educators, and now entrepreneurs. The mission of their company, Pixie Dreams, is to teach children how to have a strong mind and a good heart. So this episode is going to be jam-packed with practical tips of what you can do at home to teach values to your kids. One of the goals of the podcast is to help you raise kind-hearted kids, and we hope that this episode can really bring everything in full circle. Let's get started! Welcome to the show, Corey and Isa. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, thanks for having us. We're so excited. Thank you, Thank Francis, you. for having us. Thank you for making the time. Uh, we work with, with, with both of you through our relationship in Miami, and we're so excited now to introduce you to our whole Recomigo audience. And so I really want them to get to know you a little better and know your story. Can you tell mm-hmm. us where are you from? And then what is also like your fa- family dynamic? So both, uh, I'm Corey. Hi, thank you guys for having us. Um, Isa and I are both from Venezuela. We were both born and raised uh, in Venezuela. Uh, We've been friends since we're three years old. We went to school together, uh, even high school. And then we both uh, moved to the U.S. to to study and we both have master's in education. Uh, by, By chance, let's say, or because... Life put us together in other ways. Uh, I ended up marrying her brother. So we are sister-in-laws. And with our background in education, we decided to start our our own company, Pixie Dreams, once we both became mothers because we both have children the same age. We each have um, Isabella is mother of Annalisa, who's three years old, Mm -hmm. and she has a little boy who's not one yet. And then I have a daughter who's almost four and then a son who's one year old. And when we became mothers, uh, we decided to launch uh, this company, Pixie Dreams, because we thought that there was lack of values in our society and in our schools today. And we wanted to address them from the teacher perspective and kind of bringing our mother experiences uh, into play as well. That is awesome. Well, first of all, I love how you've had, you know, sort of sharing this journey together. Um especially you know, moving to the U.S. and adapting to like a, a new way of life and then also now raising your kids bilingual and that you're able to share that experience because community is so important and it's you know, what we try to do with the program as well to have be able to create that community. So congratulations to both on all this exciting stuff, especially with Pixie Dreams. Um, Thank I know you, you mentioned, you know, you started, you both have that background in the education field. What, what made you choose that? Like, where did that come from, that passion for education? Um, I think we can both um, relate to one thing that I I think uh, was important for us when we were kids, everything, you know, the game that we used to play was was teacher. We loved to play the teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when we, when we were growing up, it was something that was just, it came naturally uh, to help children become better, just to help others. And through children would be doing it in a, a more magical and creative way. So it was a good and really, um, it was a great field to be in. Uh, we both have masters. Our masters are different. She has a master. Cody has a master's in global education and I have a master's in educational leadership. And when we sit down and we, um, we just discuss ideas, it's great to have her view and her take on certain things. And then my view and take on other things, because, um, we have a little bit of the same background, but with, with little, uh, differences like our, our masters. So that, that helps us create Pixie Dreams um, to become a better project and a more 
complete program, so to and speak. And when did you start the project? Like, uh, how, what year did you start? And how was that process for you when you both saw that there was a need for a program like Pixie Dreams? And then, you know, you had the idea and you, you want to create this for the families and for the schools. So I think Isa and I can, and it's like a vivid memory in our minds, I'm sure. Um, I gave birth to Clarissa in 2015, and that's what when we initially started brainstorming about the idea. It started with the idea of writing a book about values or a set of books, let's say, about values. And little by little, when we started brainstorming different tools that we could provide to parents to teach values, we said, you know, it's a perfect match. When do parents really sit with their children. It's when they read a story, when they read at nighttime. Most of parents take, you know, about 15 to 20 minutes, as studies have shown, to read to their children at night. So we decided to write, to start writing our set of books about values. And we created our first book, Once Upon a Wish, a book about endless kind wishes. And it teaches children about the value of kindness. Now, little by little, when our meeting, when we started meeting weekly, we kind of brainstorm new ideas because we said, well, there we're only focusing on parents. How about schools? How about teachers, administrators, community? So we came up with the idea of the Pixie Values program curriculum, the full curriculum, which can be used by any school. Um, and then we also added our toolkit of flashcards, which has all the values A through C, um, with an animal that represents each value and a prompt question that makes children think about that value. So it started when, when we both had our first child. Um, our meetings were usually in the living room while we were carrying our children or while they were taking a nap, uh, you know, kind of dealing with the mommy duties and work at the same time. Yes. <laughs> and um, with the program, with the Pixie Dreams Value Program, so that's for schools. Can, can parents, is that, is that a tool that parents can also use? Yes. So the Pixie Values program um, was designed to be implemented at schools, but also to be implemented at home and in the community. So part of the Pixie Values programs is the Pixie Values flashcards and parents can use this at home and teachers can use them in the school. So a lot of the things that are in the curriculum, they can actually be used at home. Uh, but of course, the curriculum has to be implemented in your child's school to have the whole experience, so to speak. But our flashcards and our book about kindness are available for parents anywhere, even if their school is not implementing our curriculum. OK, that's awesome. So this is basically another another resource for all of our parents listening or if you're an educator, this is something that you can do. And what I love about the, the Pixie Dreams program is that you are focused on teaching values to to, to you know, to kids and to our new generation. So why why do you think it's important for for parents and for educators to be uh, teaching values to kids? And, you know, why why did you see there was a need for that? How how did that come about for you? Well, I think there's um especially here in the U.S., there has been a strong focus um, in our school system towards academic progress. And we're very focused on our children learning how to read early, learning their letters, being able to write their names since they're very young. And then once they grow older and older, being prepared to take, you know, state examinations. Um, there's so many, pre so much pressure, let's say, in the school towards academics that we've lost focus on the values that they need to really have social growth, which is or emotional growth, which is even more important than these academic progress. So Isa and I, as teachers, had identified this, um, this, let's say, Again. this aspect of teaching that was missing in schools. But when we became moms, we realized, you know, this is hitting home. This is going to affect my child. And we decided to find a way to mitigate this process. Not that we are not going to focus on their progress academically, but as teachers and mothers, we understand that if they are not social emotion, if they're not well social emotionally, then they will not have academic gains. Uh, so I think that's where where really we really saw the need for for a program like like ours. And and the program, by the way, everyone listening, you can go. Um, can you tell us your website again for that? Our website is um, www.pixiedreams.com. Uh, it's Pixie and uh, 
dash dreams.com dash dreams exactly and then you can also find us on instagram which is at pixie dreams dot inc and there you'll be able to find a lot of resources just little activities that you could do at home um, and that's really helpful helpful for parents and teachers and also you can contact us uh, through instagram or through our website uh, you can also find our books at amazon so um or, you know, you can reach us uh, through those uh, ways and we'll get back to you with any questions or any any information that you may want. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, the 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 book is beautiful. Uh, Once Upon a Wish, it's, it's a Thank beautiful you. book. I I loved um, I loved it. And I also love the flashcards. Everything is designed so beautifully. Um, and I, I love also, you know, the touch on respect, determination, all these important values that like you said, sometimes we forget and, you know, we need to be doing our part to, to teaching that. So sometimes parents, you know, they ask us what time, what age should you start teaching values? How do you teach values to kids? It could be a complicated um, topic sometimes. But do you have any any advice on that? OK, so uh, the most important uh, years in our children's lives are from zero to six years old. So we need to focus on their social emotional development and growth during this time. So there's no, um, you know, when they're one year old or two years old, you're going to say, well, they're too small. How am I going to teach them about values? But when we're actually teaching our children how to share, we're teaching them about generosity. So when we're teaching them how to hug their friends, we're teaching them about love, about kindness. So we need to model this behavior as parents uh, at home. And there's a couple of things that we can do, which is really, really simple. For example, uh, model good behavior, as I said before, we should encourage our children to help others. Um, random acts of kindness. This is a really, really strong one. Gordy and I are true believers that kindness is uh, the heart of all the values. So if we really um, try to teach our children from a very, very young age, the value of kindness and the big difference in can, it can make in others' lives, this is just going to open the door to teaching and learning other values such as generosity, respect, responsibility, comp uh, empathy. So um, it's just starting with kindness. That's why we started with this first value. And that, that's our first book. It's a book about kindness. And once we learn kindness, we are going to be able to learn all the other values. Um, another thing that parents can do is applaud good behavior. You know, every time you notice your child doing something right and applying universal values in his or her daily life, recognize that behavior and reward it with positive reinforcement. That is key. Um, and something that parents can also do is, for example, join a nonprofit organization in their community and put a family volunteer project on the calendar. So then all the family is involved in one little project. And with one project, you can work with so many values. So little things, you're going to be able to find that in our in our Instagram, for example, on our website. But, you know, there are little things that we can do that will actually change the life of our children and the community that they live in. I love all those ideas. And I would just add that that um, we both Isa and I really encourage moms of of toddlers, let's say, because as Isa mentioned, we think that it's hard. They're hard concepts. They're long words. Um, but we really sometimes think that they know or understand less than what they really do. So don't be discouraged to really throw out those words to them because even though they can't express them, they can listen to them and they'll start, you know, registering that in their minds and in their development. And by modeling the behavior little by little, you'll see them how they really understood what you read to them in a story or by, by explaining the flashcards we have are a great uh, toolkit. And I'll just Ex you give this example when my my son was going to be born I was trying to prepare my daughter 
and I used our flashcards at the time. She was two years old and I did not think she was ready to use them. Uh, and I was the creator of the flashcards. So I told her, we sat down and I said, um, you know, Clarissa, let's pick five values you're going to practice when, you're, when your brother's born. And we picked patience, we picked love, we picked uh, generosity. You know, we threw out maybe like three or four. And then we focused the entire month on those four values. And when he was born, I could see, you know, the advantages that that it took on taking the time to teach her these values versus me not explaining to them, I'm sure it would have been uh, very different. So don't be discouraged, even though they, they can't express it yet. Uh, I'm sure that something, you know, something sticks with them. Yeah. And studies have shown that, as you've said, you know, the zero to six um, age group is so important that we start not just doing, um, you know, social emotional, but also just conversating with them and reading with them and just being able to get, you know, their, their, their brain processing mm -hmm. everything. So for, for the parents that maybe their kids are a little bit older now and they didn't get started, is it too late? <laughs> can, can they still, you know, try to, try to teach them, um, some, some values? I, I, I think I know the answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always have, you know, what we recommend is, is um, to be consistent in any strat strategy that you're following at home to teach values. Um, however, don't hesitate to change your approach if it's not working for you. So there's always tools there. And if you're doing it one way and you see it's not working, we, you know, through our Instagram, you'll find numerous tools. We have uh, something called our pixie kindness jar, which it's, is a little jar with uh, jelly beans. And every time you catch your, your child doing a random act of kindness, they can eat a jelly bean. And when the jar is empty, then they get um, an outing with the family or, you know, a movie, a movie night or a little prize to reinforce that positive behavior. So don't hesitate in changing your approach if it's not working for you, or even if you haven't started doing using any of these tools at home yet, it's never too late. You know, the children will always model behavior anyways of what you're doing. At awesome. Home. That's great. I love all these little tips that you have, like the jar, that is such a great idea. Um, and just, you know, all the all different things that you have. And you said all of this is on your Instagram. So if, if parents listening or teachers, you want to get some ideas of what you can do in the classroom. Be sure to check out the, the Pixie Dreams um, Instagram account. Hey, Rico Amigo family, we want to take a short break to thank our sponsor, Infinity, a Kemper company, for promoting bilingual literacy and helping families save hundreds of dollars on auto insurance. We know the cost of raising a family can add up quickly. That's why Infinity offers three standard options to all of our Rico Amigo podcast listeners. You can customize your coverage to fit your needs, so whether your budget is limited and you need to meet state minimum requirements or you want the best protection possible, Infinity has you covered. Get your free auto insurance quote online today at Rico org slash podcast or give us a call at 833-265-7024. Again, that is 833-265-7024. Thank you. And now back to our episode. So you both are moms. You both have careers uh, in education and you've added entrepreneur into your list of, of things to do. How do you balance everything? Um, well, it's I, we won't say it's easy. Um, but it is rewarding. Um, we have late nights, early mornings. Um, and what we do is we just try to work whenever our kids, you know, let us. So when they're just going to bed at nine o'clock or eight o'clock, we have dinner and then we say, you know what, let's sit down, let's have this presentation, let's throw off these ideas. And we just find the time. And it's amazing how when you're passionate about something, when something really moves you, you find the time. I don't know how you're asking us right now. And I don't even believe how much time we've um, invested in Pixie Dreams. And I don't know how we've done it. But I think the answer is when you love something and you know it's working and you see results, you just find the time. Five minutes here, 10 minutes there. But it's worked for us uh, until now. And we're, we're happy that it's it's something that's changing the lives of the kids. Uh, and I think that's how we're able to, to find the time. That's awesome. Anything else that you have in mind or, or you know, what you see next for Pixie Dreams? I know you, you have the, the flashcards, you have the book, you have the, the, you know, the, the education the toolkit. Anything else that you have coming um, up with the program or, or something that you're really excited to work on? 
So yes, our next project, as I, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, uh, we wrote our first book, but with the intention of writing a whole set of books, because as a flashcards, we have a value for each letter of the alphabet. And our goal is to write a book for each value. So we do have our second book coming up soon. Uh, illustrations, which we didn't mention, all the illustrations are made by hand, watercolor, and then turned into digital, uh, digital images. So the illustrations are very unique. They're very, they're magical. They are gentle. They, they're warm. Um, and we have all the illustrations and the second book ready. So that's our next project coming up. We're all, we've also started implementing our pilot program of the curriculum in, in our first school here in Miami, uh, to later start implementing in other schools. We have also, uh, tons of professional developments scheduled this school year at different schools, which we teach that part. It's more towards the teachers and principals and we give them the tools and it's a, an entire professional development focused on creating um, a positive learning environment in your class and school. So those are some of the little projects that we have coming up soon. And our our next book will be on the value of perseverance. Um, which is something very important for our children nowadays to be determined and kind of, you know, work towards their goals and, but be happy while doing it and not be discouraged. That's very exciting. Congratulations on, on everything that you're doing. And of course, releasing your second book, the once upon a wish is again, such a beautiful book. Um, and I, I'm so excited for, uh, for, you know, for the families to, to get in touch with you. So um, we do have a segment called uh, Favorite Picks of the Week. And I'd love to know some of your favorite things. So the first thing is, what is the best piece of advice you've received? So I think that one, as, as juggling, you know, duties of mom and work, uh, we realize that you don't have to be perfect to be amazing. I think that's uh, our biggest advice uh, in everything we do daily. Uh, when you really believe in something, uh, you'll make it work, as Isa said. Um, so I think, yeah. you know, just a reminder out there, especially for all moms, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. You are amazing. You don't have to be perfect. That's awesome. Isa, anything you, you want to share for that? Um, I also think that um, a great advice that we received once we were um, starting Pixie Dreams was work hard for what you want. And um, I, I know I, I can't say this enough, but with, with just our passion and our love for what we do, we've been able to create something that I think um, is beyond what we what we expected that we can do and it we could do in so little time so I think one of the best advice that we've received is work hard for your dreams and conquer them I mean as as cliche as it may sound it's something that we really we've been able to witness for ourselves that's great and I would also add Francis as a mom um, and just this came to mind, but I know it was a learning curve for me. I'm sure for Isa as well. Uh, when you work and you're a mom at the same time, you have to remember to put your work aside when you walk in the door. Leave that phone in your purse or finish a call on in your car before walking in because your family time is also important. It's not only about work. So I thought a lesson uh, we learned um, since we're juggling so many things at the same time, we do have to put work aside at some point, uh, you know, and take the bath time seriously and be there present 100% for our children as well. That's awesome. Uh, yes. Okay. So then the second one is a favorite quote that you have. We're gonna we're gonna use a quote from from our book because um, we actually fell in love with this quote and we really really believe in it. Cody, do you want to share it with us? Yeah, I'll read it. This is this is a quote of one of the you know pages in our book, um, and Mo and Miss B, who are the the main characters, you know, are kind of looking up and looking at fireworks. And the quote says, "We must always believe in our wishes, for they are the magic in our world." Ah, oh, awesome! Very beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit more about the characters for, for the parents and then teachers listening? Yes. So Mo is a little dog um, and he was actually inspired by um, my dog, uh, <laughs> who is a dachshund. So um, uh -huh. this is little Mo, which is, you know, a small dog. And then there's Miss B and she's more kind of like the teacher figure in the whole book. So Miss B teaches Mo 
about the value of kindness. He doesn't know anything about kindness and he wants to learn. Um, and Miss B finds a way to teach kindness through wishes. So um, it's really beautiful how the children love the book um, in a way that they see w wishes in such a magical way. They always want their birthday to come so that they can make a wish and make it come true. So Miss B uh, teaches Mo a lot of things about kindness and how it works all around the world throughout making wishes. And that's where our quote comes from. You know, believe in our wishes because they are the magic in our world. Wishes can come true. And one of the little things about the book is that we have to make kind wishes. You know, uh, you have to be kind towards others. And, you know, they, they go into into a whole conversation about kind wishes. It's very interesting, very magical. And we really recommend it to all our parents because it's not just for kids, you know, for parents as well. We, we sometimes forget about how important the little things are and wishes are one of those little things that can actually change, change everything. I, I love how you incorporated that. Yeah, I think the book also has a twist because we're so happy that kindness now is a universal language and every, every parent is uh, focused on teaching kindness to their child. But this book has a twist, you know, because there are other books about kindness out there. But the plot of the book is Mo, it's Mo's birthday, the little dog, and he doesn't know what to wish for. And then so he starts making silly wishes and the book goes into some silly wishes like, you know, rain, uh, jelly bean raindrops or, you know, his room upside down, just fun wishes, which usually are what kids think about. But then Miss B teaches him that we should also have kind wishes. And it's it while it doesn't act uh, or or say you have to act kindly, it talks about making kind wishes for all around to make a better world, you know, uh, surrounding us. So it gives it a little twist. It's not like literally random acts of kindness, but it gives this magic aspect which children love and it captures their attention in that way. Yes, I think it's so creative how you incorporated the, you know, wishing it with with the um, value of kindness and how a lot of times, you know, we think of acts of kindness, but first you have to, you know, think <laughs> and, um, you know, have have those thoughts of kindness. Yeah. So, so you're able to do an, an act of kindness. So thank you for sharing that. Okay. And so the next one is, uh, do you have a favorite app or tool that you use? And it could be in any any field or something that you think um, would be, you know, fun to fun to share. Hey, Rico Amigo family. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Rico Amigo podcast. We're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back after this message from our sponsor. Carlitos, Grandpa's here. Feliz cumpleaños, amigo. Gracias, abuelito. Vamos a jugar. Vamos, amigo, vamos. Carlitos is speaking Spanish so well. Yes, he loves the books Rico Conmigo from Infinity. Infinity Auto Insurance? Yes, they offer free bilingual books and games online and also on their mobile app. That's how we help them practice his Spanish. And talk to dad. Absolutely. Infinity gives you free bilingual resources to teach your children to read in English and Spanish. Read together. Read conmigo. Be sure to visit RicoAmigo.org for free bilingual resources and call Infinity at 833-265-7024 to save on your auto insurance. That's 833-265-7024. Thanks to our sponsor for that message. Now let's get back to Corey and Isa. Um, I think for parents and teachers, what's really worked for us is um, Pinterest. We love Pinterest because... Um, you see so many ideas and creative um, projects and just little things that you can work with, especially with value. So you'll go on Pinterest and you'll write uh, activities on responsibility, for example, and you're going to be able to find so many cute little things and different ways and how to work with responsibility. So for us, that's been an amazing tool. And um, for parents and teachers, it's a really, really good tool. And then another app that we really, really like Um, it's, it's called Raz Kids and it's a reading app. So they have books for all ages. Um, and the kids go and they have audio books, then they have, uh, questions part of it and they review, uh, the book. So it's, it has a little bit of reading comprehension as well. And it's very fun because they have all sorts of books. So they have, you can find space books or their animal books or just, 
uh, nonfiction. So you can find anything, um, but it's really, it's interactive and it's fun for kids. So I think those are the two that we're using right now. Awesome. Yeah, these both, I, I love Pinterest as well. There's just so much to do, so much, um, so many creative ideas. Um, so as parents, um, Corey and Isa, you, you know, you're raising your kids bilingual. Is there one tip that you would give, you know, to, to our listeners that's worked for you? I think reading out loud to children is is the best tip we can give. And then so if you're raising bilingual children, a great way to teach them both languages can be reading a book first in English and then you read it in Spanish. So you can see and understand there's some things that they'll understand better in one language versus the other. Um, and another tip we give a lot to parents is that sometimes children start learning how to read as they grow older and they can read on their own. But we tell parents, don't stop reading with them at night. Just because they learned how to read, don't take that time away from, from your moment with them of teaching a different language. So read to them out loud every night, even if they're older already. I think that's one of the, the biggest tips we, we give or the, the one we use the most. I don't know if Isa wants to add anything to that. And I think I'll add to that. Um, obviously, our children are very young uh, and um, we haven't started experiencing, you know, the older kids and how years of school, you know, children tend to be more comfortable with English, especially if you're using that strategy of only Spanish at home. But what we've, you know, from meeting different parents, what we have heard uh, a good advice is if your child um, is trying to express like an emotion or is sad and is trying to express something that is really important to them and cannot do it in Spanish, then don't be um, so hard on them and let them, you know, tell what, tell you what's happening in English. However, if it's simple things like day to day things, like Isa said, just try to stick to the, to the language that you're speaking at home. Thank you. Those are those are great tips, and, and we'll be we'll, we'll we'll be sure to check back in in a couple of years <laughs> to see. I know I know I know your kids are still um, fairly young, but um, one more question. Um, you know, with the podcast, our mission is to help parents raise by, by, raise bilingual, by culture, and kind-hearted kids. I think we've touched a lot on on you know teaching values and raising kids to be kind, and then we touched briefly on being bilingual. But do you have any tips for parents that uh, you know want to raise their kids to be bicultural? Yes. And I think um, last year, both Isa and me experienced it um, at school. Our, our daughter's school had an international week and they invited parents to talk about their countries and their culture and maybe read books or, you know, do, for example, we're from Venezuela. So I went to visit my daughter's school and we made arepas, which is a traditional dish in Venezuela. And I read a book about Venezuela. And after that visit, I realized I had never sat down and taught my daughter about her culture. She hears it constantly. She hears us, you know, speaking Spanish. She eats arepas every morning, but we had never talked about arepas being from Venezuela. And I really saw um, how, how beneficial it was to celebrate International Week at her school because she was talking to me about other countries, about their flags. So I think my advice to parents would be to take the time we, we sometimes forget to take the time to teach our children about their culture. Uh, maybe it can be a cooking class or one morning you make um, a special dish about your about your country. Maybe go on Amazon and try to Google some books about your country. Uh, you can do an arts and craft project and make the flag of the country you're from. Um, you can show them videos of different places they can visit in, in that country. And believe it or not, they'll start... Um, answering back to you and saying, oh, this is, you know, this is uh, my flamenco dress is from Spain. You know, they'll start getting those little those little things from each culture. So I encourage parents to really take the time to teach them uh, those things. Yeah, awesome. I, you know, I, I think you brought up a great point how a lot of times we sort of just, you know, go through our day to day and we we have elements of our, of our culture, but maybe we don't don't really explain them to our kids. You know, if they're eating tamales or whatever it may be. I, I love how you, you know, just having that conversation with with the kids and letting them know like, hey, you know, this is what we, you know, we traditionally or what our family did um, because we may be doing it already. We're just not doing the the exclamation part or exactly. connect or making the connection. And we say that with values also. Um, we always say, you know, it's all going back to basics. It, the lessons are already there. It's not that our children are not 
um, using values is that we're not labeling them or we are not making them aware of, of how they're exemplifying these values. So catching those and putting words to those actions will make them aware of how they use those values in their social interactions. And same goes with your culture. You know, if we if we talk about it and label it and really make a little lesson out of it, then then we are teaching them. Yes, exactly. Well, again, this has been uh, just a great conversation. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing with Pixie Dreams and for coming on the show and, you know, letting us get a little glimpse of, of that and learning more about how to teach values, which I think are so important. And I know that um, everyone listening, you know, wants to teach values to their kids and wants, you know, kids to, to grow up and being kind hearted and and, you know, have respect and be responsible and determined and all these great things. So. Um, it's been a pleasure having you here and, you know, we're excited to see what else you have coming on in the future. Thank you, Francis. We were so happy and, and we love Read Comigo. Um, you guys offer such great tools for parents and, and students as well. So it's been a pleasure uh, speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Um, we're just going to remind everyone about um, our website, which is www.pixie dash dreams.com and then our instagram is at pixie dreams dot inc and whichever you know any questions you guys may have any more information we're always available thank you so much for having us this was this was amazing thank you thank you for listening to the read Grim eagle podcast we hope you enjoyed this week's episode and found it helpful for the show notes or additional episodes visit readgrimeagle.org slash podcast be sure to take a screenshot of the episode, share it on social media, and mention at Rico Meagle for a chance to win bilingual books. We're selecting five people every week. We would also greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And lastly, thank you to Infinity A Kemper Company for sponsoring our podcast. Call Infinity at 833-265-7024. That is 833-265-7024 to start saving on your auto insurance today. Gracias y hasta pronto.